everyone. Thanks for being here. We'll call the regular scheduled board meeting for July the 9th, 2019 to order. If you will please rise with the uh, indication of pledge will be given by Dr. Jurgen. Thank you, Mr. Manson. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day and all the many wonderful blessings that you've given to us. Lord, we thank you for our community and just giving us such a beautiful place to live and enjoy your beauty. Lord, we ask for your hand and guidance and protection over our entire school system this summer and for next year. And Lord, may we always come to you for guidance and help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dr. Jordy. All right, we'll jump into uh, the inspiration, Dr. Cole. Thank you, Chairman Mansell. Our inspiration is being provided tonight by Carver Aikens from uh, Greer Elementary. So. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. So it's me tonight, <laughs> and um, it's not a crew of people, Are you gonna say um, but it is me, and I'm going to tell a story, uh, hopefully that will be inspiring. Um, I guess you can tell me afterwards. So, um, and I've got a couple of slides that I'm going to just kind of clip through in just a few minutes. Um, but uh, this is a story about dreams. It's a journey of dreams. Um, and it's really a journey that, that we took this year at C.B. Greer um, Elementary and kind of where we're going to be going in the future. Um, so I want to tell you that story. And it started about a year ago in the spring and summer of, of last uh, 2018 um, when I went to the movies and I watched The Greatest Showman. I don't know if you've seen it, a phenomenal movie, and inside that movie there's a song called A Million Dreams, and um, that song just kind of stuck with me, and I, I googled it and YouTubed it in my car for days, and um, it just is a song that speaks to the creativity that is inside, of, inside each of us and inside of each, each of our students. Fast forward a little bit, and I watched America's Got Talent last summer, just kind of bored clicking the channels, and this guy named Michael Ketterer gets on. I'd heard about him in the past, and he gets on, he sings his song, it's phenomenal, he gets the golden buzzer, and um, right after that, there's a little <laughs> snippet with his family. Um, uh, this guy's an adoptive um, foster parent, and he adopts um, children, he had like seven, eight children, and um, he said in that video clip um, that the reason that he fosters kids and the reason that he adopts kids is because some kids are not able to dream and that he and his family are able to dream big dreams for, their, for these kids that they adopt. So that just kind of like got to me, you know. I think every year as a principal, you're kind of like looking like, what, what's going to be my, my theme? I hate that word, but, but you know, what's going to kind of help me um, prepare a school year for our teachers and for our staff and for our students? And, and um, so this, this word dream just kind of stuck with me um, and really sparked an idea um, for our school, for our staff, and, and for all of us. Um, so that kind of led me to these two things that I wanted to work with our teachers and our staff on at Greer. Um, it was remember why we chose this profession. I mean, so many times we can kind of get in the doldrums of, of going through the motions and doing our job that, that we, we forget why we chose this job or why we're doing what we're doing. And so um, we, we started asking ourselves that question and, and kind of going through that remembering process of why, why we wanted to teach and why we wanted to lead and why we wanted to be in public ed. Um, and then I asked our teachers to, to dream big dreams for their kids. I asked teachers to dream big dreams about reading. Um, you know, if, if, if we can dream a dream about teaching our kids to read, then we can help them get through kindergarten, read at the first grade level, read at the third grade level, and then move on to future and bigger and better things. And we can also dream how we can teach our kids how to solve problems in math and, and really in the world. We can teach our kids how to dream about um, experimenting in science and teach our kids how to dream about uh, reflecting upon history. And so all of those different things were things that I helped our, or I, I hoped and wanted to help our teachers kind of sort through. And, and for the real purpose and the one purpose of helping our kids grow, helping our students grow into being something bigger and better and someone and something that's more than what we are. If, if we can help our kids, whether they're our kids that are sitting with us at home or whether our kids in our classrooms be something bigger than what we've been then, and do greater things than what we've done, um, 
that's what I believe we should be doing and what I kind of led our, our teachers through um, this past year. We all have dreams, right? So I have a couple of dreams, maybe too many dreams. Um, one of mine is a personal dream, is uh, to run. I was just catching up with Brittany Tate earlier, and I've picked my running back up, and I'm definitely, de I just said that, I'm making it public, definitely going to run a half marathon in 2018. But a dream of mine that I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to get to is to run a marathon. 2019, excuse me. 2019. I don't want to go back in time. But, um, but uh, so that's a, that's a personal dream of mine. A professional dream is to finish my next degree. So that cross and finger that that's going to happen. Um, but throughout this whole process, I asked my staff not just to think about your, your personal dreams that you want to do with your life, but think about your dreams that you want to do for your children. And so mm -hmm. these are some of their dreams that they shared. Those are just a few of their dreams um, that they shared with and shared with me at uh, the beginning of last school year. Then what was cool was to come back at the end of the school year in, in May and to show this again and to show the faces of the children that we taught this year and to have them remember um, what they accomplished this year and were they able to reach their dreams, so to speak, with these kids. Um, and that's kind of where we're going to take it further. You know, that's where we're going to move next at Greer. We're going to continue to remember um, what those dreams are and continue to think of ways that we can accomplish that. So now I have something for you. What's your dream? If you so dare, you can write down this little bit.ly link, and then you can enter in your dream. You know, when you're sitting here as a Board of Education member, a superintendent, an assistant superintendent, a director, or even part of the public community, what is our dream? What's our dream for, um, for where we are, for our roles, our responsibilities? What's our dream for our schools? Um, what's our dream for our students? What's our dream for our community? If we can remember that and then let that be a motivator for us to kind of move forward each day, and to accomplish these dreams and to reach these dreams, then we can certainly do what I think we're all here to do, and that's to make a positive difference and impact the lives of kids, which is kind of what I ask our teachers to do, to remember why we came here, why we chose this path, whatever path that might be for each of us, and to help us dream big dreams for our kids, for the kids that can't dream, for the kids that can dream, and for all of our students. That's all I want to share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Very good. Thank you. I'll turn over to Ms. Tate. All right. Well, just a few weeks ago, the Golden Isles Penguin Project performed its most recent performance of Shrek the Musical Junior. Tonight, we have Heather Heath, Executive Director of the Golden Isles Arts and Humanities with several members from the acting troupe here to talk about this amazing national program which provides young people with developmental disabilities the opportunity to explore their creative talents mm -hmm. and perform modified versions of well-known Broadway musicals. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity. Welcome in. Come in. I'm the director, as you can tell. <laughs> um, uh, yes, uh, we just finished our third production um, about two years ago, two and a half years ago. I think we came before you just to let you know about this amazing opportunity that we were going to be bringing to the community, um, the Golden Isles Penguin Project. Um, a, as Brittany said, it is a, a performance of a musical, and all of the stars of the show are artists or young people with 
developmental and physical disabilities. They're paired with a mentor uh, who does not have a dis disability who's there to assist them as needed. Many of them now think they don't need any help whatsoever um, because they are seasoned professionals. Um, but they do uh, an amazing job. Um, and if you had an opportunity to see the show, which I hope everybody will do uh, in the future if you haven't, um, it truly is a, a wonderful experience. We have seen such amazing growth in all of our artists and our mentors um, over the last three years. Um, and especially this year, we, we had about a third new members, new artists, um, about half new mentors. Um, but even the new ones, because the returning ones have so much confidence now, it just kind of spilled over. Um, and it's just a joy to work on. Um, I'm not going to talk because I want some of these guys to say what they, how they think or feel about the program. Uh, Mackenzie, do you want to start? Yes. Okay. Tell them. Mackenzie, tell them who you are and what grade you're in, where you're at school. Well, um, I go to middle, middle school. I love that school. <laughs> I love that school because I'm an eighth grader. Eighth grader. And why do you like the Penguin Project? Because I have a disability. A learning disability? A learning disability. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know, Amy is her sister. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll say something. Yes, and Amy <laughs> is a mentor. Yes, I'm a mentor. I've been doing it for three years by now. I've been doing it for three years by now. And I loved it. I did Amy, Peter Pan, and now Shrek. But I hope, hopefully, we'll do it more years to come. It's really awesome. I love hanging out with my men, my artist. She's a girl in a wheelchair. She's so awesome. <laughs> and she will steal the show every time, Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Autumn. Rosa? My name is Rosa Ullman. I will be a sophomore, sophomore at Brunswick High School this year. I've been in Penguin Project for two years now, and I've just seen such exponential growth among both the artists and the mentors and the parents. I've seen kids that, you know, were shy and they didn't talk much. They'll, sh they'll talk. They'll, they'll go up and they'll engage in so many conversations with you. Elizabeth will, oh, yeah. she'll, she'll, she'll she rarely <laughs> talk, but she will <laughs> no, she listens. She listens. She listens to you, and that was such a beautiful thing to see in Penguin Project is how much growth these kids had, and it was very <laughs> uh, uh, cute for sure. And I've cried a couple times thinking about this because I myself was not outgoing when I first joined. I really kind of saved myself till every time I was there because my friend made me come. <laughs> <laughs> now she talks a lot. <laughs>
and has been in the project since the beginning too. Jack Warren. Say hi. <laughs> seen some kids come out of their shells and, and be able to feel like they can they can develop uh, their personalities and um, I know that some have grown in, in ways that they didn't expect and, and we didn't expect and they, they really come a long way my son being one of them um, this is the, the performance for y'all is is just gravy but but what it does for the kids is what it's really about. It, it, it's a place that they can develop uh, and, and know that they can learn to, to, to be themselves. And uh, that's what it's all about. I'm a grandmother to those two blue girls right here. <laughs> Yes, that is what makes the program so special is, is the bond that the mentors and the artists have. Um, and it goes, it, it doesn't just last through the process, which is long, um, but it, it lasts throughout the years, um, which has been really great. Uh, Ren, can you want to say why you like Canyon Project? Um, I like Canyon Project because I can enjoy sales and like, I can enjoy the artists. Anybody else want to say anything? I'll say something as a parent. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when this project first got off the ground. We, I think we met at a table at uh, Spanky's. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember just th personally thinking of our boys. They love the theater. They love singing. And this concept, I never, never pictured in my head that our boys would be able to do something like this. And, you know, a lot of things that people do and have big ideas just don't get off the ground because there's not people willing to help. I have to give it up to Miss Heather, Miss Lisa, 
Miss Lenora. Miss <laughs> Allison. Uh, all the people behind the scenes that we don't see. And to be honest, I think every parent in here can say, say this. When we get together in January, <laughs> we're, we're, we're thinking, good luck. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> You're not going to do this. But by mid-March, April, it's coming together. Our children are singing. Our children are playing together. Our children are texting back and forth together. And I, I think they learn skills, not to interrupt you, that they've never had before. Right. Mackenzie tap danced in Shrek, and she's never had a tap she wanted to Unbelievable. Before. <laughs> Autumn. Fiona. You're not Autumn to me. You're Fiona. <laughs> what a performance. All four nights. I don't see how you still kept your voice. Unbelievable. And the mentors, just like you said, they're the heroes behind it. Because they're bringing out, I'm so glad BK said opportunity. They're bringing out more opportunities than our kids have ever been afforded to in a long, long time. And so... I would encourage anybody in the public, anybody watching on TV, please go out next year. We don't know what the, the show is yet, but it's going to be spectacular. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to go see it, it gets sold out every night for a reason, because you're going to laugh, you're going to cry, you're going to laugh again, and then you're going to start crying and you don't even know you're crying. <laughs> and it is such a beautiful performance to see these folks people, their abilities that just shine. I, I can't say enough, and I hope this program spreads because I think every community needs something like this. Absolutely. And I, it is, this is, a, as we've said before, it's a replication program. It was started by a doctor up in um, Illinois. Um, there are now about 30 replication sites across the country, predominantly in the Midwest, but there are some that are starting in the South. I personally have been contacted by several groups from Jacksonville to uh, Statesboro to Dublin going, how do you do that? We want to do that too. So hopefully it will continue to spread. Um, and I, I will just say this program is my heart. It, I do a whole lot of things. This one is my heart. This one will continue long after I'm gone because we're going to make sure of that because it's awesome. And these guys are awesome, right? Yes, you are. And now I guess that's a good segue to see how awesome they are at the 4th of July. <laughs>
anyway, thank you, thank you for this opportunity so we can share what we're doing. Um, it, I will leave some of our brochures about the program that have some more detail. Um, and I will do Miss Allison's job, who's not here tonight because she had to work, which is if anyone would like to financially support the Penguin Project, <laughs> we always take donations. Thank you very, very much. Miss system can be a partner for years to come. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very Um, I had the absolute pleasure of going to watch their performance and actually record it. I had the best seat in the house right behind Dr. Jurgen, and he was jamming out. So, <laughs> all right. Well, next up we have Chief Ellis. On May 15, Glen County Schools Police Lieutenant Noreen Meeks and State Game Warden Cassidy Gerstorf did what many of us would consider extraordinary, compassionate, and heroic. They successfully rescued a young person attempting to jump off the Sydney Linear Bridge. Here to introduce these two individuals is Chief Ron Ives. Thank you, board members. The Department of Natural Resources has a unit of law enforcement officers called Conservation Rangers, game wardens in the state of Georgia. There's about 250 of them across the state in all 159 counties. Um, the Glen County School Police is 26 police officers serving the schools. Uh, a typical day for a game warden could be checking the boats for life jackets, current efficient license checks, just mundane things, uh, but they are state police officers. Our officers could be a mundane day of just something as simple as walking around a school, keeping that safe and tying a kid's shoe, maybe the most, most worst thing that happens that day. But on this particular day, on May the 15th of this year, as I was working at my desk, I heard a call over the radio, and it was Noreen, Lieutenant Meeks' voice, and I could tell she was very, very hyped up at the time. And she said, I'm getting out with a DNR officer on the bridge. She said, I think we've got a jumper. And it was very, very tense on the other end of that radio, waiting to see what happened. It was like a movie that you couldn't see, that you, were, you knew was going on at the time. And a few tenths, minutes later, she called back and said, we've got it. We've got this person secured. Um, Essentially what happened is, is, is the DNR officer, Gerstoff, uh, game warden, saw this guy on the bridge, saw this doesn't look right, went over to, to find out what was wrong with the young man and was dealing with him. When Lieutenant Meeks was going home, she rolled up on it and saw, ooh, this is not good, I need to back this officer up. And they were able to get close enough to the guy to grab him. She recognized him as being a former student. Uh, they both used CIT training techniques that both of our, our officers and the DNR game wardens are trained in to get this guy, to get close enough to this guy to, to pull him down off the bridge at great risk to their own safety. Uh, very heroic. I was, you, know, you guys know my background with DNR, so I was very proud of him. So I want to read a, a brief commendation that I've got for both of them. Cassidy, I'm just kind of trying to insert your name here on yours. But this is presented to Police Lieutenant Noreen Meeks this 24th day of May 2019. I, I went here and gave her a commendation a little earlier in the year. Dear Lieutenant Meeks, Please allow us to commend you regarding your clear thoughts and actions in response to a suicidal former student on the City Near Bridge on 15 May of 2019. Mm -hmm. Whereas you were headed home for your tour of duty, you were alert, observant, and thus you witnessed the Georgia State game on top of the bridge. 
He quickly surmised that he was attempting to deal with a man who was contemplating suicide by jumping from the bridge and he stopped to assist. Whereas he took immediate action, networking with the DNRLE state ranger, Cassidy Gerstall, by working as a team, he both utilized CIT techniques and were able to inch close enough to the man, to, the man to react swiftly and physically pull him across the railing to safety. Through teamwork, alongside another law enforcement agency, your keen eye and calm reaction perhaps averted the tragedy. A great risk to your personal safety is that of one of the gang members. Whereas you were vigilant, and by using your professional training and experience, your efforts were key in assisting a person in distress and perhaps preventing lasting injury or loss of human life. Therefore, based upon your efforts, both of you, on 15 May of 2019, and your continued unwavering professional pursuit of professional duty, we hereby award you this commendation and the sign of Donald Self and Major Thomas. Like I say, I'll be getting yours uh, later. The DNR board has already recognized. It went to the command staff for DNR. He got a call from the colonel uh, the next day. Um, John Barner. Thomas. 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 Okay, I used to work with two of them. I couldn't remember which one was. <laughs> Barnard was the colonel of DNR, recognized him the next day. Very proud of both of them. Um, very, very proud of both of them. That's what happens when, when something comes together, the training takes over deal with a situation like that. So um, very proud of both of these professional law enforcement officers. So Lieutenant Nix has got a game These officers too have been nominated by uh, Bob Lynn, the captain with DNR Region 7th Captain, called me the other day and said, I'm going to nominate both of these folks for an award with the Peace Officer Association of Georgia. Uh, I could not support that anymore. He said, we'll handle all the nominations. You guys just sit back and relax and see if we can't make it happen. So uh, there may be more awards coming for these folks. So, again, thank you for honoring. Thank, 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 thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. say um, it's, it's great to be on this way. Um, it's a little humbling. It's a little embarrassing. <laughs> um, I think Lieutenant Nix and I would just did what any people who have the ability to do something would do. So thank you for this. And uh, whenever you see somebody having a crisis, just try to sympathize with them and the rest will take its course. Thank you very thank much. You. We appreciate you. I myself am very honored and humbled to be here this evening because of the events that took place that um, hopefully we will, you know, everything's worked out for the young man. Uh, it was just fortunate enough that I happened to know the young man and didn't realize I had known, I knew him at that time until he reminded me that I knew him and told me his nickname that he went by. At which point I saw a little opportunity to open up some doors there where I could intervene a little bit more along with Officer Gerstoff and speak with the young man as if I knew him personally, because I remember interacting with him quite a bit at the high schools uh, when he went there. So that was just a good opportunity. There is no cookbook recipe for this. It's not where you simply have a recipe and you add an ingredient into it and everything's going to work out. You just don't know. As peace officers, um, it's our job to do that, but we didn't do any more than probably a lot of you here in this room would have done. So I'm just humbled and honored. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> Last month, the Golden Isles College and Career Academy hosted its annual Camp TNI, which is a summer professional learning experience that serves more than 250 teachers in specific CTAE programs. The goal is to bring all of the CTAE teachers together to help students develop interest in these possible careers. Dr. Rick Townsend, Mr. Kevin Pullen, and Mr. Jeff Holland will be here tonight to talk about it. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Also, a real quick introduction, Dr. Joe Deppenhart, new principal of the Career Academy. He's here as well with support. I just want to say thank you first because your uh, partnership, your involvement, wouldn't, without that, we couldn't do this. Basically, we host a state training for Georgia Department of Education at the Career Academy. 
and we have, you'll see some of the pictures on the uh, slides, some of the projects that instructors were doing. But basically we have teachers teaching teachers, we have industry professionals teaching teachers. Uh, it's amazing what they go through. And I'm going to speak the shortest of everybody. I promised Dr. Cole only, what, 20 minutes, you said? Just, just two or three. Uh, but just real quick, just let you know that teachers look forward to coming back each year. The programs are construction, automotive, machining, welding, graphic design, broadcast video. We even added counselors this year. I uh, took partners like Gulfstream, the uh, uh, Association of Construction Contractors, Jekyll Island Authority, to pull this off. And one of the things that makes it nice is when you can do things outside the box, uh, as in hands-on activities for the teachers as well, so they can kind of learn it there and take it back home. Um, one of the things we kind of did this time with the help of Chris and Joy in technology department, we were the first site, first non-testing site for AAC to ever administ and administer a test in the state of Georgia. So usually there's just a couple sites in the state where AAC will come down and offer their test. There were 19 instructors that earned 44 certificates. If you know what AAC is, that's the uh, that's what you want. That's the that's the gold ticket for the automotive tax. And our, those instructors around the state earned some AAC certification at GICA. First time ever for AAC to do that in a non-testing site. Proud about that. Those are some opportunities we provided. Um, the counselors they went to Jekyll Island Authority, uh, Jekyll Island Hotel for a, a meeting, learned about CBB and tourism in, in the state. <coughs> Gulfstream talked about industry, aeronautical industry here. Some of the comments from the workshops. One said, great workshop. I'll now find a day for this conference before making summer plans. That's a big deal. Think about a teacher who's off contract, not getting paid to come. And they're coming early just to come. Uh, thank you for adding another day to the workshop. Post dates in the fall. That means they want to plan in the fall to get here. Uh, the Thursday training was the best I've ever been to. And we've heard that quite consistently from everybody. And so Lynn Wilson, Tim Elliott, everybody else from DOE, they're amazing. And we're just proud to host it. This is 10 years that we've done this now. And uh, they want us to keep going, and we're going to keep hosting it. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff and Kevin. But Jeff's going to go first and tell you about the instructor perspective and what it really means to uh, our teachers. Thank you, Dr. Townsend. Um, yeah, Kim T and I, this trade and industry, um, teachers from around the state come in um, and for three days, some some uh, groups meet for four days, um, we get to hear from industry people, we get to network with other other teachers from around the state. And the great thing about it, most almost every one of us who is there is the only one in our district that teaches what we teach. So there's nobody back home that we can bounce ideas off of or talk about best practices or, or uh, just, you know, what's working in your classroom or what, what, what are you doing that's working? Because just like in Glen County, I'm the only guy that teaches construction. Uh, Mr. Pullen's the only one that teaches audiovisual in Glen County. And that's the way it is across the state for most districts. Uh, it's very unusual to have multiple CTA teachers teaching the same course. Um, so it's a great opportunity for us to network uh, with each other to learn about best practices, to, to meet industry people uh, who are very supportive of what we're doing. Uh, trade and industry is, is really behind us uh, a lot and, and uh, because it's CTA is critical for our state and, and our future development and growth. Um, we, um, we get to do some hands-on stuff. We get to, it's not, we're, we're just like our students are. We don't want to sit in the classroom and listen to somebody talk about something. We want to do it. And so I saw some of the slides there, some of the projects that we worked on in the construction area uh, out back, and, and having the counselors there this year was a, was a big plus, I think. Um, I had an opportunity the morning we were doing these projects. Um, the counselors came back and kind of mingled around and walked around and, and saw what we were doing and, and, and talked and had discussed, you know, discussed things, ideas with them. And uh, we were able to talk about uh, the importance of some of these career pathways and for some of the some of these counselors, I, I don't know that uh, maybe it helped open some ideas, open some doors that, that uh, maybe uh, things that they weren't aware of, possibly. Uh, and and the great careers, the futures that our students have opportunities to go into because of what we teach in CTAE. And um, it was it was a good opportunity. 
we've got to talk about, I, I uh, actually, I didn't even realize who I was talking with at the time. It was the, the lady from DOE who was the head of counselors, and I, I'm sorry, I don't recall her name. Um, but we were talking about class size and how important it is to maintain a smaller class size in some of these trade and industry classes because uh, you can see here in some of these pictures, we've got 30 teachers out here in, a, in an area uh, trying to accomplish a project. Uh, and and I, I told her, I said, you know, this kind of looks like ants out here herding cats. And she said, yeah, it's pretty crazy. And I, I said, but you have to understand that I have a pretty good size area back here to work in. Not every school system has that. And I said, uh, and also, these 30 people back here don't need a lot of one-on-one -on -one instruction. They know what they're doing for the most part, but, but it's, it's the teamwork and the camaraderie and, and things that, that was important there. Um, and it's, I, think, I think kind of a light bulb went off that, you know, how in the world would you teach 30 kids in, in a situation like that? <laughs> you know, there's not, there's not, it'd be tough. But anyway, so um, I, I just want to thank you guys for your support of um, Camp T&I. Um, we had, um, and I want to thank you for your support of CTA in general. Um, uh, these programs uh, are addressing a critical shortage in our state. Uh, in the workforce development areas, there's a there are a lot of uh, industries that are facing critical needs in, in the very near, near term, uh, as particularly in, in construction industry and trade industries and manufacturing and, and what have you. Uh, and we have a vital role to play in that. In fact, uh, Dr. Townsend mentioned Associated General Contractors of Georgia stepped up to the plate this year, and these these uh, sheds that we were able to build these, these hands-on projects, learning projects that we did. They stepped up, up to the plate to the tune of more than $6,000 in donated materials from Associated General Contractors. They believe in what we're doing. They believe in what we're doing, and, and they realize it's important for their future and the future growth of our state uh, to be able to provide those, uh, those opportunities, those careers, and introduce students to those careers. And I'd love to have a chance sometime on another night maybe to come back and talk about some of the success stories uh, that I can share with you of students who've been through some of our programs and how they're able to, to move directly into uh, some of these careers, very good careers. And, uh, and love to do that some other time maybe, but uh, I appreciate you, uh, your time and, and attention tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, folks. Good evening. Good, good to see you all. Thank you. Um, I want you to go with me somewhere just for a moment. Um, I want you all to be video teachers for me. I want you each be ready to go to a school this fall and be the audio video technology teacher at that school. Don't worry about it if you don't have a major for it. There is not a college major for being a video teacher. We don't have one. Audio video technology and film is the largest career pathway in the state of Georgia. And there's no major to prepare you for it. So what do we do? We don't care if you're an English teacher. We don't care if you're a sociology teacher. We don't care if you're a technology teacher. If you will come to Camp T&I <laughs> at the Golden Isles College and Career Academy and give us three days, four if we can stretch it, we will send you back as a video teacher. <laughs> and we have done this for eight years. There are about 300 that we know of video teachers in the state of Georgia. And most of them come through Camp T&I here in Catholic County. Um, so that, that's, that's, that's us in a nutshell. That's us in what we do. So some of those pictures that you saw there, and they're pretty attentive and kind of looking at what we got. We have anywhere from, well, we started with about 19 or 20 teachers, and I think our highest enrollment has been 90 um, to a conference. And uh, yeah, we get real kind of low down, dirty, and shameful because I have my wife make a dish called peach praline French toast. So they all know that first night at, at, at Camp T&I, you can get your big fat plate, plate of French toast for the morning, and then we start class. And we kind of kept that ritual up every year. So some of the folks call and say, are we having French toast this year? And well, that's how we kind of, we, we keep that process up. Um, King and Prince Seafood partnered, God bless them, and they supplied us with shrimp and grits for a morning. So we, it's kind of grown, but the, 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 main, the main mission is the industry has changed so much. It is a it is a billion dollar industry in Georgia, and we are looking for workers to keep the industry here. Uh, there's a thing called the Georgia Film Academy that 
Believe it or not, our own College of Coastal Georgia is certified to teach, but we don't have it there yet. And we prepare for a certification in the film industry. And we, as, as high school video teachers, are charged with that same film academy curriculum to try to prepare the students to be able to get those, to get those careers. The current <coughs> tax incentive, believe it or not, again, that Georgia has for the, for the film industry originated from a Georgia career academy. That's where those billion dollars came from, a little old Georgia career academy. So we are really have always been, ever since the inception, the grants roots on what that industry has been and will continue to be. What it does in our communities or whatever community gets a movie, it makes what's called a clean dollar. A clean dollar in those, two, or in those billions of dollars is when a, a business comes to town, they don't, affect, they don't affect your utilities, they don't affect your schools, they don't affect your overhead. They just come in, they do business at your restaurants, they do business at your Home Depot, they do business at your hotels, they do business everywhere, leave the dollar, they go away, and you just got the money left in town. So as an industry, it's a really good one to cultivate to have. Um, so uh, that's kind of been our strategy to kind of keep that going. If you really do want to be a film teacher and give me three and a half days, um, I can probably get you today and get you school. <laughs> <laughs> but as my colleague Jeff said, I want to thank you all so much for your support on what we've done uh, to be able to do this process, to be able to be the, the, the lead place to actually prepare a video teacher to go out and do this process and prepare others to be film professionals. The process is working. There are, there are several schools, technical colleges and, and four-year colleges that have the Georgia Film Academy program and can certify a student with about 16 credit hours to be able to work in the film industry. Uh, there are professionals who are doing it. Our own uh, Dr. Joyner, her daughter Lila, is in the film business in Atlanta. She came through our school system. And no, she is not fetching coffee. She's working in one of the largest film studios. They are booking clients to come in and make major motion picture productions. I think they did Black Panther and some of the other ones recently, too. So when the kids come out and they're touching this, um, they are getting real opportunities to be able to work in the film industry that, that really likes Georgia right now, and hopefully it stays like in Georgia. We can thank you for that, for a myriad of personal and professional things I could tell you <coughs> for you with for your support on those two. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Lastly, Zarek Samples with the Glenn County Family Connection is here to speak about the upcoming Kinder Carnival, which is a free early learning festival for families slated for August 3rd at the Marshes of Glenn Library in Brunswick. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Zarek Samples. I serve as the Chief Development Officer for Coastal Georgia Community Action. And tonight I'm here on behalf of Family Connections. Um, I serve as one of the committee members for Kinder Carnival. And this is a free carnival for individuals who are looking to have their children go into a structured uh, pre-K program, both at the uh, Glen County School System as well as services as community action. Uh, we know that there is a big education disparity in this area, and it is so important that we start with early childhood education. Um, this event is focused on children going into kindergarten. Um, we've had, last year we had 350 individuals parents and children at this event, and next year we're looking forward to be even better. Um, it's going to be at the uh, Glen Marsh Library, the new one downtown re re recently renovated, and it is our prayer, hope that next year it will be <coughs> at the Risley Center on um, 1800 Albany Street. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. <laughs> and that concludes the rest of this presentation. Thank you, Ms. Tate. Okay, that will bring us to Citizens Address the Board. We have one person signed up tonight, Mr. Anthony Polite. I've seen you know the rules, right? I know the rules. Yes, ma'am. You got five. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I will take five because I thought this was just going to be a work session and no public speaking. But in the meantime, I still have on my list things that I want to see accomplished and I want our community and youngsters to be involved in. Um, first of all, I want to see better hiring practices. I know several people who have applied and gone to the schools and not been accepted. And I'm hoping that Dr. Cole will 
step in and let the book stop with him and not with the principals because they have a tendency not to hire those who are most qualified but their friends, neighbors, and golf buddies and all that kind of stuff. Also, note that there's not one black middle school teacher uh, principal and that's a, that's a shame. And I'm quite sure that there are many qualified uh, minorities who should be in one of those positions. And it's a shame that, you know, it's like a friendship type thing. And that's what we have in most of our middle schools, people who are friends and friendly friend and all that to the people who have been placed in those positions. Uh, also, I want to, I want to, Ask that the uh, female SRO who was uh, who has retired uh, that she be replaced with another minority. It's a good thing when the youngsters feel comfortable about speaking with the SROs who are in their schools and not just feeling that they are there as police officers who are just there to prevent crime. And that's what one of the uh, SROs told the parent. You know, we're not here to help uh, do this or that. We're here to prevent crime. And that's not what we are here about. And therefore, you know, I'm hoping that this practice will change. Also, um, remind pa I want to remind parents who may be listening that you need to spend more time with your youngsters, not only when it comes to teaching them the basics, but also encouraging them, motivating them, and also teaching them to be respectful and mindful of their, uh, not only their teachers, but all adults. And this is a crime, really, when I see how people are disrespecting the elderly, and that's me. So, <laughs> I, hey, but I jack them up, so. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Okay. So we must remind them that they are to respect authority figures. And you can do this. I know a lot of times we are afraid to speak to the kids in the church and the parents, you know, don't want you to speak to them, but I speak to them anyway. Cut it out. Let me take this off. That's it right here. Okay. But we have to be involved with helping to train our children and teach them how to behave how to respect others, okay? And, uh, I need to see you before you leave. <laughs> Thank you very much, and please, I hope we have a successful school year coming up, and let's get it right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Blight. Thank you. All right, I will entertain a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Motion by Mr. Medell, second by Ms. Bobbitt. Any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, consent agenda items. Um, I have number eight, number nine, uh, ten, A, B, C, and D, which is all of finance, uh, E, which is all of policy which was all covered at 10 o'clock today in our work session. Does anyone have any additions or deletions or anything out of that group that would they would like, to, like to cover again? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Motion by Ms. Bobbitt. A second. A second by Vice Chairman Edgy. Any discussion? <clears throat> all those in favor? <clears throat> Unanimous. Thank you. Seven zero, and that would drop us all the way down to executive session. Does anyone have a reason for executive session? Okay, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Motion by Dr. Jurgen, second by Ms. Bobbitt. Any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous at 656. Thank you all very much. Have a great evening. Thank you.